In this week's episode of the Art of Soul podcast, I'm going to talk to you about my plan for 2020 for how I can increase my sales and my prices of my artwork. Welcome to the Art of Soul podcast. Each week we explore what it means to be an artist, finding your artistic voice, developing your artistic skills, and how to build a professional career and business around your art. Now, please welcome your host, artist and art teacher, Rod Moore. Okay, welcome to this week's episode of the Art of Soul podcast. My name's Rod Moore. I'm an artist and an art teacher. And uh, this podcast is all about helping you develop your career and your art business. And uh, in this podcast, it's my opportunity to share with you some of the things that I've learned along the way of building a successful art business and a, and a business around my art. So I was thinking about 2020 at the time of recording this. We're about six weeks away from the start of a new year. And also it's the start of a new decade. And um, what a great time to start setting some new goals and then working out a new plan for yourself. And uh, that's what I've been doing. So I've been working out a plan for both my art teaching business, which is the Learn to Paint Academy, and also for my own personal art sales. And as part of that working out the plan, I've been reflecting on you know, what I've done the last year, the direction I've been going in. Is that what I want to continue doing? You know, is my work really representing what I want to say? Uh, and so on. So there's been a fair bit of reflection and uh, there's also a fair bit of practical goal setting as well. So I sat down and I thought, okay, what do I really want to achieve in 2020? Now I have to keep in mind that my art sales, sales of my own artwork is really only about 5% of my overall uh, income, um, or at least, at least that's the case this year, right? So 90 to 95% of my income comes from uh, teaching art, and in particular through the Learn to Paint Academy. So I just want to say that right up front, that selling art isn't my main focus, um, even though it's something I definitely want to do more of, hence the reason why I have this plan. But I just want to make that clear, in case you're uh, an artist who your only source of income is just selling art, you will still find everything I'm going to talk about to be extremely valuable, I would think. So my goal for this coming year, 2020, is to, uh, to sell 65 pieces of work and to, uh, in the process, put my average price up to about $1,000. Um, so you know, that would equate to about... 65,000, but I've set my income goal at 50,000 for the year um, for my sales of my artwork. Okay, so um, again, that's only going to represent a small portion of my income for the year, so it's not going to have all of my focus and energy and attention, uh, but I believe that it's a, an achievable goal. So, really, what I'm focused on is 65 pieces of work, and over time, Right, getting my average sale price up to the thousand dollars by the end of 2020. Say, so. so you might be asking, well, if you're going to do 65 pieces of an average price of a thousand dollars, then that would be 65,000, wouldn't it? Instead of 50. Well, yes, it would. Except, I don't expect to hit that thousand dollar mark as an average until later in the year. So that means, you know, early in the year, it's probably going to be about 500, 600 dollars average. So I'm incrementally going to be going up. So I've set my income goal at 50,000 to try and balance out the difference. And then I thought, okay, well, what do I need to do um, to be able to achieve that sort of volume? Because really, if I achieve that sort of volume, I'm pretty much doubling uh, the number of sales I made uh, this year, okay? Uh, probably a bit more than doubling. Now, when I say that, I don't take into account small demo pieces, anything that sells for under $100, right? I just don't include that. Uh, so I've sold a lot of paintings this year for under the $100 mark through eBay and you know other places. Um, so I don't count those uh, as part of my main work, if you know what I mean, right? So I separate that out and I don't really include that and, and plan for that. So I'm talking about uh, so I sold about 25 pieces of main work this year with very limited input and time. And uh, I really believe I can you know, multiply that by three to get to 65 pieces of sold work. Now, in order to get to 65 pieces of sold work for the year, right, that means certain things need to take place. So what I've done is I've mapped out a plan here. And I, 
and I'd offer you the idea of grabbing a notepad and pen because pretty much everything that I've put down here, you can apply to your art business as well, right? Um, and most of what I'm going to go through here, what it really involves is more work. But if you love painting or you love your art practice uh, and you love sharing it with people, then it's not really work, is it? Um, I don't think so anyway. <laughs> okay, so let me have a look here. The very first thing I thought about was I need to put my prices up. Okay, so this year my average sale price was um, around about the $400 mark. And uh, in order to start achieving you know, some higher goals uh, for myself, because uh, I guess one of my longer term goals, say two to three to five years down the track, is I want to be doing six figures in retail sales of my own artwork, um, which is in addition to obviously what I do through the teaching side of the business. So a number of things have to take place to get there. So the very first thing is to put my prices up. Um, my average sales price has been good this year. It's been going up but it's nowhere near what it needs to be. And in particular, uh, when I say not where it needs to be, if I wanted to get into, say, a, uh, an art gallery, for instance, my prices are too low right now. My average price is just too low because if they take 50% framing and so on, I'm just not there yet. So the very first thing I need to think about and be mindful of and start to work towards is putting my prices up. But I, I don't want to double them overnight, if you know what I mean, unless I bring out a completely new body of work um, maybe even under a different brand name. I think it's probably not wise to double your work, to double the prices overnight. So I'm going to start off with an average price around 450, 500 at the beginning of 2020, and a goal to work that incrementally up to a thousand dollars. And the only way to move your prices up is really to be painting and selling, right? So that you're selling enough work that there's enough demand there that you can keep nudging the price up. You don't want to go too fast with putting your prices up, though, I don't believe, because if you get to a point where you price, you've price priced yourself out of the market, it's very hard to come back down, right? So um, I'm going to do it strategically and with a lot of thought before I put my prices up. That's my first point. The next one is to do bigger pieces, right? So traditionally, I've only done smaller pieces and sold those. Um, but this year, and part of the reason for that was, it's funny how we make things up in our own head, right? I've, we all have self-imposed limitations, but part of the reason why I've uh, done smaller works is because of storage space. I've struggled to store my paintings in my house, so I resolved that a few months ago by going out and getting a storage unit. And, uh, and that sort of took a mental handbrake off, right? Because now I've got space to store it. I'm thinking, okay, let's do bigger work. Well, bigger works have higher dollar value, right? higher prices. So that's one way I'm going to you know, work towards putting my prices up. Um, the perceived value from people out in the market should be you know, higher as well. So I'm going to do bigger works, um, which probably means using bigger brushes and, and really being mindful of productivity, you know, like how, how long is it going to take me to do these bigger pieces? Can I bring that time frame down to a reasonable time frame? Okay. Next one is to, just to do more work, to be more productive, because even though I work, um, I work long hours, I work hard uh, in what I do, but I do tend to have periods during the day where I do slack off a little bit, and that could be time I, I use in the studio. Part of that is because I spend a lot of time, you know, every artist goes through this, I'm sure, but I spend a lot of time either in the studio or in front of the computer, um, working on my own at home. And so I do tend to like to get out of the house after I've done a certain amount of work and just go and sit in a cafe just to be around human beings, right? Um, so I probably do waste a little bit of time each day, maybe an hour a day, that I could be more productive and I could produce more work, more output with my work. So that's another thing. I'm gonna, if I'm going to hit 65 pieces sold, then I'm probably going to need to do 300 pieces of work, possibly 250, 300 pieces of work. So I need to be more productive. Uh, next one is to do better quality work, right? So better quality work will enable me to charge higher prices over time. So that means better quality uh, supplies. You know, may, maybe it means stretching my own canvases. I don't know. I haven't explored that yet. Um, but getting, you know, uh, professional grade paints and, and canvases and supports and things like that. Not to say that I haven't in the past, but, you know, sometimes it's easy to buy cheaper uh, material. Uh, and also the quality of the work that I do as well, like just getting better at my craft. That's a journey, that's a process that takes time. Uh, so probably to help me achieve that goal, 
I'm going to take more workshops in the coming year, um, in 2020. Okay, so better quality work is something that I did, you know, all of us can strive towards. That next one is uh, to do work with a broader market appeal. Now I've got a question mark next to this. I know some artists' opinion on this is to paint what they want to paint and uh, let the market respond to that. But there is something to be said about painting uh, what people want to buy, right? <laughs> so I'm talking now, there is a difference between being an artist and being in the art business. If you're in the art business and you don't have any other source of income, we have to be mindful of commercial reality, right? And therefore, if people want to buy a particular style or approach, that maybe we need to have part of our work reflect what the market wants to buy. So I'm thinking about how do I uh, do a you know, more market appealing type work without really losing the integrity of my own art practice. Uh, and, and one of the ideas has been that I, I might start painting under a pen name you know, and create a completely different brand that maybe has more commercial appeal and then still do the painting that I love, you know, impressionistic, uh, slightly abstract uh, landscapes um, is the work I like to do, right? So keep doing that, but also starting a second brand, um, which is more commercially viable. So that's an idea that I'm exploring. And, um, you know, like an author has a pen name because they're writing in a different genre. Um, J.K. Rowling's is an example of that, right? She wrote the Harry Potter series, but then she wrote a whole series of murder mysteries under a pen name, and it was a guy's name, right? So that was interesting. So, you know, doing a work that has a broader market appeal. Next one is one that I need to be really mindful of, and this requires planning, uh, and that's to do more group art shows and exhibitions in both Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast, where I am. So, you know, the, there's a lot of art shows, a lot of exhibitions that you can enter into, and in the past, I haven't really applied a lot of focus to doing that, um, I go in a few, you know, a couple a year, but if I wanted to, I could be in 15, 20 different shows a year. So that requires a couple of things. One is identifying where the shows are, what they are, um, having a spreadsheet with the date of the show, um, when the entry is closed, you know, what the criteria is, that type of thing. Uh, and then having work available to, to go into those shows. So to couple of different things I need to work through there, but I've started to make a list of all the art shows that I'm aware of in my local area, right? Um, and different art groups that I can join, that I could be part of their group shows. So that's definitely something I'm going to do. Uh, whether I get involved in all of them, or maybe I just do, you know, I did two, I think this year, two or three, maybe three. Um, so maybe I'll ramp that up to say 10 um, different shows this year. Now, here's one that I, I don't see many artists doing at all, in fact, I don't really see any artists doing this, but I've written down here to do two to maybe three virtual exhibitions a year. So you've probably seen artists who are very professional, very successful, and they're always working towards the next solo exhibition with a gallery, and you know, and they, and they build their whole year around having two or three solo uh, art shows a year, and that's where most of their sales are made, right? So I was thinking about that. Well, I'm not really in a gallery, and I don't really have the desire to be in a gallery just yet. Um, how can I achieve a similar sort of momentum towards two or three events throughout the year? And I was thinking, well, why not just hold a virtual exhibition, right, online, where you can have a simulated uh, art gallery experience and you can invite your email list, your social media following to this, right? Now, there's software around and there are websites around today that enable you to set up your own virtual exhibition um, in, in an art gallery. And it is really incredible. You can walk through the gallery and look at the work, and then you can link back through to your website to buy the work if you want to. So I'm planning on having two to three virtual exhibitions this year with perhaps say 20 to 25 pieces of artwork in each. And that what that means is I can then divide my year up into thirds, right? Every four, every four months, I'm going to hold a virtual exhibition. And, um, and I'm going to, you know, work towards that. So do a body of work or a series around the next coming virtual exhibition. So I've written that down as a, uh, a definite, right? Because it's something I've been talking about for a year or two. Definitely going to do it this year. Next one I've got is to do one or two solo shows per year. Uh, we'll see how that goes because I'm not really in the mindset to go out and pursue galleries. I know galleries work for a lot of artists, uh, but there aren't a lot of galleries around me here. And um, you know, so we'll, we'll just see what unfolds. I've put it down as part of the plan, but I'm not going to pin my hopes on it. Right? I've got a lot of other 
areas to, that, I, that I want to pursue as well. But it's on the plan, so if the opportunity arises, then I'll, I'll jump at it, right? Um, next one is something that a lot of artists don't think about, and that's to merchandise and productize your artwork. The biggest problem, I think, with the art world for artists is we go and we create a piece of artwork, right? And then we go to the marketplace and we sell that piece of artwork. And we might have put five hours into the work or 10 hours, and we sell that piece of work, but we never build an asset that we can get paid for over and over and over again. We sell that piece of work and we get paid one time for it. We have one opportunity to be able to make an income stream from that piece of work. And so uh, I'm looking for ways that I can, you know, for every piece of work that I do, I can get paid multiple times in multiple ways and develop an income stream that goes on for years to come from each piece of work, right? Even if it's only, you know, $100 a year from each piece of work. If, if over the next five years you build up income trails around your artwork, you're going to be in a much better position, right? So I'm going to look at merchandising and productizing my work. Now, my current work, you know, what I sort of preferred, my, my, my most preferred way of painting is impressionist, uh, semi-abstract landscape seascapes. I don't think that lends itself that well to productizing and merchandising. But going back to my point earlier, about working with a creating a body of work around something that's more market appealing, I think that could work for, for merchandise and productizing. So I'm going to give that some thought, uh, definitely. So now here's a few obvious ones, right, that we should all be working towards, and that's to grow my audience. Okay, now to me that means to build my email newsletter list first and foremost, um, because social media, uh, you know, you can build a big following on social media, and then the powers that be. They can switch off your access to that following very easily, right? Uh, as I've found out and as other people have found out, um, I built a big following on my Learn to Paint Academy Facebook page and then uh, Facebook changed the algorithm so I, I couldn't reach them when I posted. I had to pay to reach them, right? They changed the ball game. <laughs> so the best following you can have is your email database because then you own that as an asset and then you can contact them regularly whenever you choose, right? So that's first and foremost, grow your audience, right? Most artists don't spend anywhere near enough time putting in place strategies to grow their audience. Um, and I think you need to, right? So there's a lot of different ways that you can actually grow your email database. And perhaps we'll do a future podcast on that. So then following on from that, the logical extension of that is then social media. So to grow my following on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, right? And to post more frequently and to be more engaging with my audience there. Because I have to admit, uh, I get quite busy with everything we do at the Learn to Paint Academy and, and other things that I'm involved with. And um, I find it difficult to get back to people's comments and so on on social media. I, I do struggle with that big time, right? So I want to be more mindful of that and try and carve out time during the day where I can actually respond to people on social media more and post more, okay? Next one is to pay more attention to my own website. I've got work listed up on third-party gallery sites that aren't on my own website. So I need to bring my own website up to date and keep it up to date, right? Uh, next one I've got here is to e actually send emails to my newsletter list on a more frequent basis. I don't think once a month's enough. I think maybe twice a month is probably what you need to be um, doing, yeah? Okay, so here's one that I think is really important for all artists, and that is to document and share my process more, to build more of a story around me as an artist, uh, what my studio practice is, what I'm working on, uh, the, the body of work that I'm currently you know, immersed in, and what the inspiration behind it was, to, to really develop the storytelling and the documentation of my process and putting that out through social media and to my email newsletter list a lot more than what I've been doing because that's what engages people and gets them uh, you know, mesmerized by us as the artist, right? Is is that insight into your world as the artist. At least that's what I believe anyway. Okay, next one is to actively work at least five different selling platforms. So I've got my own website, right? So forget about that. Um, I need to work more selling platforms. If you want to sell work, you need to put your work and make it available where people go to buy work, right? So what a lot of artists do is that they join all the artist Facebook groups and they post their latest painting up there and they get lots of likes and feedback and pats on the back from the other artists. 
but that doesn't sell a lot of work, at least not as far as I'm aware. Um, if you're making a six-figure income from doing that, let me know. I'd be keen to find out how. Uh, but perhaps thinking about where do people actually go to buy work? They're going to places like Etsy, eBay, Saatchi Online, Art Finder in Australia, Blue Thumb, Art Lovers Australia. That's where they're going to buy work. If somebody thinks, oh, Mary's birthday is coming up in two months, I need to buy her a, you know, a nice seascape painting for her beach house. They're not going to Facebook art groups to look for that. Right? They're going to a marketplace. So up until now, I've, I've played around with eBay. You know, I, I fiddle with it. I don't do it consistently. Um, most of my sales have come through Blue Thumb, an online art gallery. And uh, I've got work up on art lovers, art finders, and one or two pieces on Saatchi. So I'm not really fully all in on any of those platforms. And so my goal is this year to, you know, to work five of them um, and to really work them well. Every you know, new painting that I release into the marketplace has to go up on my website and at least five platforms, right? Because you're, just, you're gonna create more exposure for yourself and that leads to more sales. Okay, so work five different selling platforms. Next one is to get more press, free press and, and publicity. Uh, you know, getting press for artists is not difficult at all. It's very easy, in fact, right? Um, the media, like print media, newspapers, local newspapers, they love doing stories on artists. Local radio, they love interviewing artists. But here's the thing. If you contact them and say, hey, can you interview me? I'm an artist. They're going to say, nick off, you know, go away. Um, you need to be smarter than that. You need to develop a, a story angle that's going to be compelling to them, right? Um, so one of my recent ones, I'm involved in Toastmasters and I won a district speaking competition. And so I put out a press release saying local artists win speaking competition, right? And so, I, you know, I had great media coverage, including front page, full page coverage, photo, uh, interviews in the local radio. So, uh, you know, if you follow the right template, getting media attention is pretty easy. Um, I just haven't done it enough, right? I haven't done it enough. I should be doing it every month, putting out one press release and getting media attention every month. So that's on my plan as well. Next one is something I think every single artist has got to do. We live in the greatest time in history, and that is video, right? Video. You can set yourself up on, with your smartphone. I'm, for those who are listening to the audio, uh, I'm holding up my smartphone here, right? And uh, and the other thing I'm holding up is a little portable tripod that you, you know bought this on eBay, which is designed for a smartphone, right? So video is the killer app for artists. Why? Because through video, you can you can tell a story. You can share your art with the world, right? Global marketplace. Never before in the history of the world have we had an opportunity to be able to do what I'm doing right now, right? To, to connect with a marketplace. And I think video is the killer app for that. You know, now that we've got video that streams perfectly and everyone's internet connection is getting better, uh, people respond to video, start videoing, you know, even if it's just a simple time lapse of you creating a piece of work. Uh, but I think what's better is when you finish a piece of work to stand in front of your piece of work and uh, talk about the piece of work and the inspiration behind it and what the meaning is and the story and how people can buy it, right? How can people buy this piece of work and, and share it on video, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter, on your own website? Just do it consistently over and over and over and over. I mean, that's how I've built my Learn to Paint Academy business, right? It's just through creating videos over and over and over. And I started back in the days where video wasn't that viable, right? Um, today, it's easy on your mobile phone. Right? So video, everyone should be doing video. Now, down the bottom of my list here, I've got uh, gallery representation, right? So again, I, there aren't a lot of galleries around here. I don't think my chances of getting representation in gallery is that high, but it's on my list of possibilities as part of my plan, right? Because that way, at least my brain's always thinking, oh, there's a new gallery opening up. You know, I wonder if I can get representation. So um, I've got it there. I, I doubt that it will make much of an impact on my overall results, but it might, right? It might. Next one is commissions. Um, I don't really like doing commission work for, for, for painting, uh, but perhaps it's an income stream that could be developed. And if I need to, if my other sales aren't going well, 
it's there as an option. So I've got it listed again. Um, and figuring out the right way to promote commissions, I think is important. Uh, and then I've got a note down here, I've already talked about this, but the last note I made was to start a whole new range of art that's perhaps more commercially viable and lends itself to productization and um, merchandising uh, and selling prints and, and so on. Um, and to do that under a different name, a different brand. Now, I don't know that this is the right thing to do for every artist, um, especially if you're not full-time right now, then I wouldn't recommend doing this because it just doubles the amount of work you have to do. Uh, but I do think that if you're an artist who's got to a certain plateau with your work and you've been stuck at an income level for some time and you want to break through that, it's worth considering, right? It's worth considering. Um, I mean, you could even just create a whole new range of art under your own name, if you wanted to, just to simplify things. I think it could send out a mixed message uh, to the market and they're potentially different buyers. So maybe it's a good idea or not to do that. You make up your own mind. Uh, but for me, I'm, I'm potentially going to do that under a completely different brand name. And uh, so there you go. That's my list of things that I came up with over coffee um, on how I can sell 65 pieces of work this year and get to an average of $1,000 uh, per painting by the end of the year and uh, will I do all of them probably not but at least I've got a starting point at least I know all the things that I could do and there's probably a whole lot of other things that I could do as well uh, so it's a starting point it's a mind dump of all the things that I could do and probably what the best thing to move forward would be would be to go through there and pick out half a dozen things and throw all your energy at those half a dozen things so if, for example one thing I know I must do right is increase my production of saleable work. Productivity, right? If I'm going to sell 65 pieces, I probably need to produce 250 pieces, right? Because I sell about one in four, one in five pieces. So therefore, that's one thing I must do. So in this list, there's a, you know, there's must-dos and there's good-to-dos. So go through and identify your must-dos and then pick out half a dozen good-to-dos out of that list and, um, and then just get to work, right? Really, ultimately, it's going to come down to more work. More paintings I create is going to create more opportunities. More paintings I put into the marketplace is going to create more opportunities. More marketplaces that I put the artwork into, again, is going to create more opportunities. And it always goes that the person who works the hardest gets the luckiest, right? So um, I wish there was an easy way. I wish I could come to you and say, hey, dude listening or dudette listening to my podcast, I'm the oracle of, uh, you know, <laughs> all things art and sales. Um, here's the magic key to becoming a successful artist, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what the magic key is. I just, I've come to you with the truth. The truth is it's hard, bloody work. And, um, but it's got to be strategic, right? You've got to strategically do work and it's got to be aligned to a vision, a plan, a goal, and moving forward in that direction rather than being spasmodic, right? We talked about that in our last podcast. Um, so I hope this helps. If you can think of any other ideas for increasing the sales of your artwork this year or next year then please leave them in the comments i'd love to hear them and uh, potentially incorporate them into what i'm doing um, and share them with other people as well and uh, hey one reminder you know in six weeks time this decade is over and we're moving to the 2020s the roaring 20s right um, and we've got a whole decade ahead of us and it's a great opportunity for artists to really embrace this new time, this new era, uh, this greatest opportunity in the history of the world, now's the time to embrace it. So um, sit down, make a plan for yourself, set some goals for the coming decade and then for the coming year and do what I've done. Make a brain dump of all the things you could do and then turn that into a plan and then get to work, right? Don't wait until 2020, get to work today, <laughs> right? Um, anyway, this is Rod Moore, the Artist Soul Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Please share this podcast with all your artist friends uh, that you think might be uh, interested in hearing it. And I uh, look forward to speaking to you soon on the Artist Soul Podcast. Cheers for now. <music>